Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with American Vineyard Magazine reporting to you here today in the North Coast. Here with Cindy Cron, uh, I- IPM advisor with the UC Cooperative Extension. She has been doing this for two years now in this position. How the time has flown through this crazy <laughs> pandemic. I'm, I mean, in these last two years have really been abnormal, so it's a little difficult to figure out how everything really should be, right? (laughs) Definitely true. We've had a really major drought, and uh, so a lot of uh, insects have behaved differently this year. Um, And then not long into the position, we were in lockdown. So it's been a very interesting time, but um, I'm enjoying my position. Well, and we're grateful to have you here. The the topic of discussion at the Sonoma Grape Expo today uh, for your presentation was spotted lanternfly. Mm -hmm. This is a colorful pest and when we think about uh, different apocalypses of the various industries like uh, Asian citrus psyllid and Huang Long Bing and, and, and citrus um, grapes, this could be something, a, a huge disaster if this pest is able to make it to California. We've seen dead insects on, through, uh, through airplanes or cargo ships or whatever coming into California, but no live pests yet, right? Yeah, so spotted lanternfly um, has not arrived in California yet. Um, It is believed, though, in its uh, pattern of how it's dispersing outside of Pennsylvania, um, it's a matter of time um, until its arrival. But it's not here yet, and that's why we're here talking about what does it look like? What should we be on the lookout for? Um, so that uh, we can have early detection. If it were to arrive, early detection can help pre- you know, prevent establishment of this insect in vineyards. So it's very important to know what am I looking for? What does it look like? Who do I talk to if I find this? And it's a colorful pest, so it seems like we could reasonably identify, right? It's a, it's a pretty big bug. Yeah, so not only is it colorful in the immature stages, um, the, the adult stage is pretty large. It's about an inch in length and half an inch wide. And so you have your eggs, which are covered, or which are the part, the portion that is the most difficult to see because they're often covered with a waxy substance that the adult puts over the eggs. And so you don't really notice the eggs as much. But the immature stages, um, the first three immature stages are this waxy black with white spots. And um, the fourth immature stage is red with um, black and white spots. And then the adult, um, noticeably large, uh, one inch in length, up to one inch in length. And the four wings uh, have spots on them and the little black lines at the tips of the wings. But the hind wings, when they flare their hind wings, you can see has a bright red with black spots. Very noticeable um, at that point. Now the big concern is if this pest gets here, we you know, from, from reports in Asia and in Pennsylvania, this is very detrimental uh, for vineyards. And the bigger the pest, it seems like they, they have larger mouths that feed on the, the vines, right? Is it the, it, it's what, what, what's concerning is, is the leaf tissue, not the grapes, right? So what's really concerning is a few things. One, the, this insect aggregates. So a lot of insects will come into one small area and feed. Two, um, they have been shown to be able to kill grapevines by feeding alone. Um, And not many things can kill a grapevine outright. Um, And three, they produce an excessive amount of honeydew, um, which is a substrate for sooty molds, um, which affects wine quality in the end. Yeah, so not only are they they taking away the the photosynthetic growth of these vines, Mm -hmm. but then they're pooping all over them for... (laughs) Lack of a better way of saying it. And and so it's really taking away their ability to, to do what they need to do and get the sunlight they need, right? Um, definitely, if, we, if it goes, you know, over the, the grapes, you know, and those grapes are processed and you have this mold growing, okay. it's going to affect wine quality. Um, and But the, the honeydew makes everything sticky. Um, it's, it's just like a sugary excrement. So it just makes everything really sticky, makes the, the leaves sticky in the vines, um, and it can start to ferment. It's in such a large amount that it can start to ferment. You can smell uh, very, like something's fermenting if you're near a large population. Um, But ultimately, it can feed to a point, because they aggregate in in groups, it can feed to a point that it actually kills the vine. And that's where 
it's, it's very much um, an interest in trying to prevent this insect from arriving, and if it does, early detection to prevent establishment. Yeah, and then the thought about do we have products, you know, pest control products that will be able to handle it when, if the time comes, that it really does come. And I say heaven forbid, but and speaking of heaven, the tree of heaven yes. is a host for it, right? So the likelihood of this pest coming into California, if it made it here, it has lots of hosts around, right, in the north coast and, and in other parts of the state. So we know that this insect has, um, has been shown to feed on over 100 species of plants, 40 of which, at least 40, are known to be in North America. Um, the preferred host are Tree of Heaven, which is an invasive uh, tree, but it is you know, pretty widespread, um, and grapevines. Those are the two main hosts, um, but they can feed on an array of uh, woody ornamentals um, and f forest trees. Um, right? Yeah, so uh, stone fruits, um, a wide variety of orchard crops. Um, so, because we don't really know what this insect will do in California until it arrives, we only can go off of what we know we've seen on the East Coast. Um, so there is concern not just in vineyards, but also in orchard crops and in forestry. So what's a grower to do, I mean, uh, at this point? You know, we do, it's not here, mm -hmm. but it can very well get here anytime. Educate yourself. Um, become aware of what do the different life stages look like. Um, and uh, spread that information to other people that work in the field that are likely to be the first person to see this insect. And remember, it can be seen in agricultural crops, but also in the forest. It can be seen in your ornamentals in your front yard, in, in um, nursery stock. So it's not just a crop. Uh, we're concerned in the crop, but you can see it outside a, of a cropping system. Um, so becoming familiar. And then know that if you ever were to find an insect, um, if you're able to collect that insect uh, and seal it in some way and deliver it to the Ag Commissioner's office in your county um, or your UC Cooperative Extension Specialist um, or advisor that is able to move forward and, and ID the insect as being spotted lanternfly or not and submit to CDFA for, for documentation. Um, this is all very important. And if you're not able to actually collect the insect, taking good photos, good quality photos, documenting date, time, and location of where it was found so that if it happens to be spotted lanternfly, um, the, the appropriate officials can go and investigate further. Right. Well, hey, thank you for taking the time. You know, this, we, we already have enough pests and diseases in okay. uh, various ways uh, to, you know, uh, problems to deal with. This isn't another one we need, so let's work together, keep an eye out for this, and hope that uh, we can you know, prevent this from, from spreading. Read more about these things in American Vineyard Magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.